I think when you listed your achieve, the achievements of that year, you didn't mention Wilfred Wood at the Southwark Cathedral. Thank you for reminding me, which I should do as a Southwark and an Anglican priest. Um, we gave thanksgiving for what Barbados had accomplished. And as you rightly said, we, we had the distinguished presence of the Sir Wilfred Wood, a former retired bishop of Croydon in the Diocese of Southwark, the first black bishop in the Church of England. He was wonderfully, he gave the sermon in 1966 at the inaugural church service to celebrate Barbados' independence at Westminster Abbey. Arabaro was at the service then. And at that time, he was a young curate, and he was able to reflect on the journey that Barbados made over his 50 years, was able to, to speak to the many positives and the many things we had achieved, but also able to provide some valuable inputs and guidance on what we must do as a society to make sure we retain high standards, good values, and always have our faith and our religion at the forefront of our actions. Let's move forward. Let's move to this year, the elections in Barbados. The result, was that a shock to you? The final result of the, the then government, the Democratic Labour Party losing all of its seats, I think came to a shock to most people. I had got a strong sense from being in Barbados prior to that, from listening to ordinary Barbadians, from getting a sense from some of the polling data that the, the government was going to be defeated. It was, I think, the consequence of a number of errors uh, that the government may have made over time, in part to do with the difficult financial situation the country is also in. But I say to people, I've said then, and I say now that the voice of the people is the voice of God. And once you believe in democracy, you have to subscribe to the outcome. When the Prime Minister Stewart then conceded that the night, I congratulated Prime Minister Motley, wish her and her new government well, which I feel is what we must do. Because outside of the four weeks of campaigning around the general election, once the results are out, we give thanks for the stability of democracy and we support the government of the day. Is there anything that you think that you could have done differently with hindsight? What's in there? What's on the mission? This is me personally. Yes, you personally. I think that there would have been the opportunity if I had had the experience that I took from Windrush to have avoided the reciprocal health care agreement which operated between Barbados and the United Kingdom. Um, it was an agreement that the UK had with Barbados and two other Commonwealth countries where nationals from Barbados who got sick here and those nationals from this country who got sick in Barbados would be treated through the accident and emergency um, free of charge and would be given free health care to allow them to stabilize and return home. In 2016, the UK government signaled that it was going to terminate this agreement. I defer to Barbados, to the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for guidance. I didn't get the feedback I needed. And what I should have done then, which I did with Windrush, was to trust my instincts, to know and determine what was in the interest of Barbados and act on it. But I didn't have the, the experience then, or maybe I was too deferential to Barbados and not fully understanding that as Barbados' envoy here, on matters here, I needed to let the buck stop with me and take the decisions that needed to be taken. And it's, an, and it's a very important question I think we should be telling about um, gesture of Ferdinand because there's still lots of um, Barbadian cricketers who are coming up to England and not having enough health care insurance. And let's talk about what you did with Jesha to um, get him back to Barbados, just quickly. Well, we had, as you said, this young cricketer, talented young man who became critically ill in the United Kingdom. Uh, his bill was £50,000. He 
his parents of modest means but great faith um, were trying to do the best. And I felt, I, I took it upon myself as High Commissioner, I took it upon myself as a Christian, I took it upon myself as an ordinary Bajan mm -hmm. to say we had to do something. So what I tried to do was to mobilize the diaspora here, to mobilize resources in Barbados philanthropically to try to get him the support to pay the bills, try to get him the support to get back to Barbados, to try to get him the support when he returned to Barbados to get the health care that he needed. And luckily, because I was a former chairman of the board of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Barbados, I was able to mobilize that. Um, luckily, because I don't believe in taking no for an answer, I pushed and pushed in Barbados to get some resources there to meet his the cost of his travel, to get someone to accompany him. Um, and I, I need to thank the Queen Elizabeth Hospital because they did send a nurse. They did try to, through the physiotherapy department, provide support to him. But we realized, I realized at that point, the importance not just of the tenacity to not take no as an, an uh, answer, especially when you, you recognize there's something that must be done, but to also appreciate the importance of being able to have a reputation that people know when you are reaching out is with sincerity and it is trying to get what needs done accomplished. Thank you. One of your catchphrases is always, I'm a servant of the people. What's next for Guy Hewitt? I don't have any immediate plans. I want to take some time to have a moment to reflect on all of what has happened here. Uh, there are some other things that we, I was able or haven't had a chance to speak about in terms of, of being in the UK and our work. One of them was as you alluded to, the Commonwealth Summit that was held this year, Barbados was able to play a, a small but I would say significant diplomatic role in trying to ensure that there was clear succession from Her Majesty the Queen and as we have got confirmation to the Prince of Wales, who will be the next head of the Commonwealth. I had reported to the government of Barbados and I had spoken to a number of colleagues um, here and, and also within the Commonwealth, that the biggest threat to the Commonwealth was not to have that succession resolved. I was pleased that it was it happened. Um, not only is the the Prince Charles the heir apparent to the throne here, I mean, he's uh, the heir apparent to the throne for Barbados because as you know, her Majesty is the Queen of Barbados. That right. is one of her many titles. Okay. He would become not just the King of England or the King of the United Kingdom, he would become the King of Barbados unless we go the route of, of Republic. So it was important for me to do that. But just to pick up also on your point of being a service to the people, while we talk about Windrush, while we talk about the work of the Commonwealth, while we talk about the 2016 celebrations, all which were significant, to me, it was the ability to be there for everyone, for anyone that mattered. About six weeks ago, a Sunday afternoon, I got a call. We had a young Barbadian couple. They were on their honeymoon in Barcelona. Sunday afternoon, they were having lunch together and they got robbed. They lost their travel documents. Um, they were it was for them catastrophic. Without a passport, they couldn't join the ship. Without a passport, they couldn't move. Um, they were being advised um, that the honeymoon would come to an end. Mm. Again, with some tenacity and great clarity that a couple starting out on their life together could not be start on this, on, on such a note. I reached out to the British High Commissioner in, in Barbados, and I thank her for assistance to the British Consul General in, in Barcelona. I thank him for his assistance. And between the mission at London, our colleagues in Barcelona, um, sorry, 
our colleagues in Brussels in the, the Barbados Embassy in, in Belgium, the British High Commissioner in London and the British Consulate in Barcelona, we were able to get this young couple emergency travel documents within in less than 24 hours. They joined their crews. They had a fabulous honeymoon. They came and saw me at the mission and thanked me. And I said to them, they were, I think, a reflection of what I feel the job is. Regardless of what happens, we don't lose sight that we are here for everyday Barbadians. And, I, and when I've ever, whether it's Joshua Ferdinand or, or this couple or others who have been in distress, that has been for me the most satisfying thing being able to reassure them and their parents in Barbados that I am here, the mission is here, they are not on their own. Um, I'm not sure that you answered the question, what is the next step for you? So, the, I, I wanted, no, for me the next step is to take a moment to reflect on, on what we have, I have accomplished over the last four years I look forward to going back. Um, one of the reasons or the reason for my returning to Barbados, not being willing to, to serve any longer, has been my family has been split between Barbados and the United Kingdom. I need to get back to my family. We need to be back together under one roof, living and existing in the unity that God designed and we signed up to. The last four years have been difficult and I look forward to us just being together um, as a family. Career-wise, I'm looking at a number of opportunities, the possibility of going into full-time ministry, the possibility of serving Barbados in other ways. I, when I, I think back on it, none of the jobs I had recently did I actively seek. They found me. I believe that the hand of providence, that in my context, God has, leads my life, and I'm going back to Barbados and quietly make myself available to God pointing me in the next direction that he wants for me. And I always say, wherever he leads, I will follow. There's a number of things that we were unable to touch on including the trip to Oxford and stuff like that. But recently you undertook a trip to Belfast. Mm. And I felt that was a very significant trip because of our association with Ireland, mm. both uh, the legacy and heritage mm. stuff. What, just quickly tell us your reflections on that visit. Last Sunday, um, we went to Belfast for an inaugural emancipation service. And it was significant to me on two levels. One. As High Commissioner, I had not visited Northern Ireland, which falls under my remit as High Commissioner to the United Kingdom. But equally important was that in our discussion about Windrush, um, we kept talking about the situation that persons who came here confronted immense hostility uh, and persevered. But one of the things that they encountered were these signs that said, no Irish, no blacks, no dogs immense hostility um, our people encountered when they came here after the war to give their life and service to this country. And for me, going to Ireland was an, an opportunity to say to them, because the Irish had been sent out to the Caribbean as indentured servants and had been equally persecuted and oppressed as a colonized people, that we understand the affinities um, that we share because of a common experience of colonization. And going to Ireland was an opportunity for me to embrace Northern Ireland as part of my jurisdiction, but Ireland in general as a country that had come through a similar colonial experience as we have in the Caribbean, as we have in Barbados, and like us, have worked hard to put it behind them and our people that are growing and prospering. I had a personal interest as well because I do have a, a slight passion for Guinness and I was pleased to be able to go over there because people say you can't get a good Guinness unless you get it in Ireland. So you had several 
pints of Guinness at various I had a few of them. I, I felt it was important is to it, sample what was on offer. Is there any discerning difference in the uh, taste of the Guinness? I have to say, as I was advised and conducted my own investigation, that Guinness, in fact, does taste better in Ireland. Okay. Hi, Commissioner. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to chronicle your journey. Thank, Thank you, Tyrone. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you very much. There you have it. Outgoing High Commissioner to Barbados, His Excellency Guy Thank you.